lead. Bumpy Johnson disputing the running with risk in the ground. Those two are the first two ahead of in third place Rich Hardy. The ladders, Gingerbread's coming they second. Prepare to reach the first in the back straight. Risk in the ground, continue to jump well. Good leap by game winner as well. So there's no money there, so that could easily shoot down. There is like 30 or quick there. Hardy boy, so then Gingerbread and Wolfie. Some cash in now, that. Balco Saint and Old Town Guard just trying to be settled at the back is now three lengths off the back end as they reach the second in the back straight. Risk in the grounds. Impressed in his jumping in the early stages. Balco Saint was the one that didn't there. Going I'm going for a full tick off set there. Head on towards another plain one. Risk in the ground will probably pick up in front here. Maroon and White, a bumpy Johnson and game winner. Hardy Boy towards the outside. Gingerbread comes next ahead of Morphy closer to the inside. Outside High Mac, Balco Saint and Old Town Guard. Open ditch looms. Hang on for a second. Maybe I should have Center. Bumpy Johnson. Put the original plan was. And Hardy just to get in down low down there, and that's just some yeah, slower, isn't it? There you go, we're out anyway. Morphy and Gingerbread, then High Mac. Balco Saint's jumping wasn't great down the back straight. Just got a little bit of a shake-up from Peter Summers. He's in eighth place at the moment, two lengths behind High Mac, and still Old Town Guard under restraint at the back. This is a long old race. So sorry. risk in the ground. Heads back. Getting low down there. The first circuit jumped to the front after the third, and has been in front since then with Hardy Boy... The grail so I think right this is what you've got to do with these weak ra the <coughs> these weak races. Johnson is just trying to get sleeps. in as cheap as Let's possible. Home straight. Bumpy Johnson got that one wrong. Lost a length. Morphy comes next with Gingerbread, Balco, Saint and High Mac. As risk in the ground measures that okay How many well. times I could have got that last trade out? Get overly high, but doesn't seem to have lost too much Hardy ground. Boy is about. And Old Town Guards, the only one detached. The other eight are now pretty tightly clustered. Risk in the ground. Great stride. He's jumped really well. That's the out. second mistake in a row for Bumpy Johnson. His rider okay. just really gathers the risk reins. Risk in the ground is turning has me on a little bit here. So risk in the ground is out in the lead. Maroon and white from Hardy Boy, the grey and game winner, who's just been popping away for Paul O'Brien on the inside. Gingerbread makes ground. Balco saves I mean, it's just too early. Look, if you look where the SP so was up there. Journey. So this on towards the right hand turn. I assume it's going to go Johnson's somewhere back, getting near back amongst them, Then Morphy. High Max still towards the outside of the field, taking a little bit of a wider course. And last of all is Old Town Guard. Obviously it's in front because so it's... Um... The ground leads them into the turn. Hardy Boy has always been on the tail of the leader, likewise game winner. It's but they've been you know? joined by Gingerbread, who's replaced Bumpy Johnson in that trio. Bumpy you Johnson can see there's hardly any money there. Hold it up. As soon as people go out, uh, as soon as that gets Morphy sort of as they reach the first out caught up back. a bit. <coughs> Risk in the ground. Heads so now we've got... One from the tail. As Risk in the Ground leads by just over a length. Hardy Boy in second. In third is game winner. Then Gingerbread Morphy's in fifth. Balco Saint and Bumpy Johnson, who's lost a Could few places. Then behind these, we have High Mac. As again, Risk in the Ground, almost too brave there. Took off a long way in advance, but had the scope to get to the other side. Trying to use his jumping as an asset here to turn the screw. Game winner on the inside continues to jump competently at the moment, but he's disputing second with Hardy Boy. Bad mistake there at the back by Old Town Guard. Really good sit by uh, Nick Schofield. I'm out of here, man. Right to the rear once again. So risk in the ground, heading towards the final open ditch, four from the finish. Risk in the ground, Hardy Boy in second, game winner in third. Morphy is now in fourth place, Ed of High Mac, who's gone past a few into fifth as they exit the Somewhere back straight. And now risk and in the ground with a run between fences. And you can see, <laughs> we hadn't quite got under Ben. Now is when I would have had to start winner. thinking then about it. in fourth place is Morphy. High Mac comes next, Bumpy Johnson trying to rally. Then Gingerbread, Balco saying. The only thing annoying about that is I could have got it a hell of a lot cheaper, um, which would have meant a hell of a lot more profit. But uh, there you go. And even if it, you know, if it was to win, you usually, not always, um, that is the problem if they are running from the front. Um, if, if, and they win front runner and they win from the front all the way through the race, you could get in trouble with an overreaction. But um, so you don't want to see them go too far ahead. But uh, um, yeah, that was a, a pretty safe trade, really. Might not have looked at it for a second because obviously I could go into the negative, but um, you can't always get the price spot on what you want. Christ, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh. Market suspended. Thought we were going to look at almost see a 101 winner there. A uh, loser. I mean, a 101 loser. Anyway, let's move on. Let's make some money. Unfortunately, one of the tracks.
has been cancelled today, so we've only got, um, I'll have a quick glance at Nats, but unlikely I'll be trading any of them races, I thought. Irish racing, I find it's just, um, as well as weak markets, they tend to have bigger fields, which makes it a lot harder, higher prices, more dangerous, less liquidity, um, best to ignore them. Um, a lot of Irish, unless it's something good on, then um, unlikely I'll trade that. But anyway, let's move on. Play. We, go on. Racing, though, we, got, we got a nice long race here. Uh, it's really funny, I just watched the price go out on Tom Cody. <laughs> and great ruffles come in just because the commentators on TV were saying their price is a bit too short. Um, but looking for overreaction, it's a nice race. It's pretty much three miles. Um, I like three miles and upwards to my favourite. So, um... The last one, not to I was tempted to put a lay in here because it, but I wanted it down. Oggly, here, oggly. I, I nearly did pre race at 1.6, just with the thoughts that sometime in the race, over three miles, it's bound, even if it wins, it's bound to pop out to evens unless it absolutely places it away. So, um, that was the plan. But if it does pop down there, I'm going to put a trade in now. Who's got plenty of experience, but yet to win a race under rules in because it's cheap at the moment. Great raffles and Tom Cody at the back of the field. So the run is um, continuing down the far side of the course, and then we just try and get out the uh, first three fences up here somewhere, I guess. So far, so that's trial. not that cheap, is it? I'm gonna change my mind on that one. The next now with. Just Hannah leading from old but I'm going to pop it down here in case the price goes silly. Because it's so cheap. They got a total of 16 fences today, and uh, normally would be 18. And I think I've miscounted already of my early part of the race. They've jumped the first four. See what just Hannah's feeling. I can't lost them in the sunshine. Yeah, they are man, all safely over. So it's just Hannah the leader then from Old Page in second. And then the two behind them on the outside, Tom Cody, who was narrowly beaten here last time out on the outside of the debutante Great Raffles. Coming down the side of the course now into the turn into the home straight. Four fences up the home straight. Sunshine coming round uh, towards that, but they will be jumping these. And the first one is the fifth. It's an open ditch here. And a good leap by the leader. All four of them were good over that ditch. So John Kington on board, uh, just Hannah. She's leading from Old Page, Derek Fox, the two-time Grand National winning jockey in, in second place. Old Page taking it ahead then of the other two. Tom Cody in the pink. So uh, obviously, if we're going to put this up, we want to do it pretty soon. It's the seventh with just Hannah. Setting out her stall early on here, and the tapes went back. Nobody seemed to, to keep going, back on, but uh, John yeah. Kingdon decided to it is get on with things, and she comes down towards the eighth fence on this first circuit with a lead of two and a half lengths. To Old Page in second, Tom Cody on the outside of Great Raffles. A deer! deer that should be really suited by the underfoot conditions. Which, uh, I believe it's See the price jumping out again already. Maybe should have got in there. Could have easily got 10 ticks there. That we're racing here anyway today. With uh, a dry day, dry night at least anyway. So they're making their way uh, down the side of the course then away from the grandstands. Just had her then still the leader with old page tracking. And nothing much has happened yet. The jumping's been good so far as well. Great raffles on the inside. Uh, rail position with Tom Cody alongside him so down the side of the course they go and the pace seems to be a sensible one still being set by just Hannah Half out of 13 under rules as old page I'm out of here man record is slightly worse than that not from 20 at the moment you never know though Today might be his day, and uh, he's being followed through then by Great Raffles. So much movement on this price, is are they? There's just not enough money being bet. 
multiple winner in point to points. You can say, look, look, look at the money coming in. The highest bet was 100. So the highest bet there is 33 quid, which was that one. So all these are just like tiny little stakes. That's why the prices aren't moving. 129 on that one for the big one. But you expect big prices on these. I'm out of here, man. Because they're cheap, so they're, you know, it's cheap to lay, isn't it? Over the first, that was at number nine. And on now towards the open ditch. And just Hannah comes up towards it. Derek Fox just asking old Paige to pick up there. Didn't make it in there. <laughs> Sucker. Just a touch out pace is great. Now, I can stay a little bit in the red on this one. And jumping out to the right there, old Paige. And see what's going on, because... Complexion of the race just changed slightly there with certainly um, great raffles, may maybe just um, at this early part. because it is a long race, there's still a long way to go, even though we're into the red zone. It's number 12 of the 16, five out, and just Hannah in a lovely rhythm in front, and old Page still stalking. 777, lucky number. A tendency to go out to the right when he comes to his fence. third, and going nicely is the favourite, Tom Cody. Just Hannah, really good there. She went into that. She picked up nicely. Now it's changing because uh, Tom Cody has gone past Old Page, who just slowed into that fence there and has just got a little bit outpaced, still clinging on for third place. And Great Raffles is struggling and is 10 lengths behind them in fourth. They're about to come inside the last half mile now. They're turning in to the home All straight right. here. Just Mostly Hannah. it's pay about 10 a minute. By two lengths. Tom Cody's got her in her sights. This is four out. The open ditch. Just Hannah good again. And there you go. Another tenner. Uh, <coughs> Overreaction. It's still actually in front there. <laughs> it's 10 in front and I managed to get out. But it's SP. I could have made more money. But... And three in the air together. Oh, what a bad mistake by Just Hannah. And she was almost... Uh, she was down on her nose there. But that's her chance gone. And look at old Page serving it up to the favourite, Tom Cody. Over the second last they go. Tom Cody now having to be stoked up a little bit. Look at that. Old Page is really rallying for Derek. Go on, old Page. Tom Cody needs a but if you look at what I said, well, how far did it go up to? to? It did flick up to sort of money. Could have got, could have got that cheap. Well, actually, fair. I don't know. That was Market so suspended. I might be giving wrong information there, but yeah, you see, I like, managed to pick that up that cheap. So we got in there. At, where is it? Just Hannah. We got in at four point six. It did come down to three point five. Could have got us slightly lower. Um. But uh, not much. Someone laid a knot, got a nice lay there at, at 3.6. And uh, you expect to see money there on the lay sides because uh, people like that crossover point. But yeah, nice easy tenner. Let's move on. The links break to Bashful Boy, who's towards the back of the pack. Oh, uh, yeah, just looking to see what's going on in this race at the moment. Santana <clears throat> Plessy, as the leaders are over flight number three. So Inferno Sacre cutting out the running for Tom Buckley has the advantage and that lead is about two to three lengths from in second the yellow colours and the noseband of Sam Tara on the outside of the grey individual east. Iorens is four wide round the turn there, on the nice. outside of the white and green colours of American Oh, so we want to get these trades in early on if we dance, can. Who's staying towards the inside of that quartet. Samuel Spade is next. Just Loose Change has been joined by Bashful Boy and Santana Plessy is at the back of the field. So in this uh, squally shower, they <clears throat> get on towards the next. Inferno Sacre continues clear of the field. Santana Individual least continues to head up the main chase. American Sniper in white and green, Amelia's Dancy, Orens and Swaff and Bulbeck. Samuel Spade, bashful boy, towards the back. Santana Plessy remains the... Not we getting nice and shape on this, but... they head on towards <clears throat> the next, proceeding by just far far change. Ahead. So Inferno Sacre pops over the next flight. Rider continually checking how far clear he is. He'll see he's around two lengths in advance. Inferno Sacre from in second place. That's disputed by individually grey in the pink and black. And Sam Tara, who just shades second now in the no yes. dance. White and green American sniper. Your ends in the pink and brown. And behind these Swaff and Bullbeck, Samuel Spade. Bashful boy just... Back in the just this change was about white. sixes, wasn't it? Inferno Sacre continuing to lead. Individual East stays 
Samtara. Iorans has covered ground, four wide round both. <laughs> Amelia's dancing on the running rail, Swaff and Bullbeck. A length to Samuel Spade in the pink and blue colours. Bashful boy, the grey jersey. I was hoping that 300 was going to push the price in there. Santana Plessy, who completed a circuit. Inferno Sacre. Over that in the lead, still has the advantage. Only a length clear from Samtara in second. And a real cluster of horses right behind now. Individual East, Iorins, an American sniper, and Amelia's Dance. Iorins just in sixth place now. Swaff and Bulbeck, Samuel Spade are the next two. They're all well in touch. Bashful Boy likewise. As Inferno Sacre Come out of here, man. towards the next flight of hurdles, middle one down the back. Inferno Sacre from so Amelia's Dance, who's moving forward. Samtara's still there as well in the noseband. Am I going to regret that? Individual East who just landed a yes, bit I am. His back foot there and was just pushed along for a stride or just two. Just look at that. To sort a few out. American Greed. Sniper and your ends are the next two. As the leaders make their way towards the last on the far side. And out in the lead, Inferno Sacre. Samtara in second. Amelia's Dance Blue and Yellow in third. American Sniper still keeping the power. Come out man. And green. Iorin's round the outside. Individual East comes next. Samuel Spade. Just loose change has passed a couple. They include Swaff and Bullbeck. As they make the turn out of the back straight, the one that's detached is Santana Plessy, but the rest of them are still all in touch. <laughs> and looking for win number four here, begins the move for home and has taken up the running from Santana. Another Spider. ten arms. Inferno move Sacre on. Has dropped out pretty tamely as Samuel Spade makes ground uh, right up on the outside as well. So Samuel. So Spade. this market looked pretty weak money wise. Uh, well, it was pre race anyway. We'll say. Uh, what happens in play, but as always, we're looking Oakley, for Oakley. a big, over big overreaction early on and see if we can take advantage of it, ideally early on anyway. Fifth place behind that one is Bel Naban in the blue cap on the inside then is the red jacket of a cheap thrill. Towards the back on the outside is 4-3 and the last of all is Barranco who is just beginning to settle down a little bit now having been a bit keen in the early part of the race. So three flights down then as they come up past the judge with a circuit to go and head away from us. And it's uh, Jamie Hamilton on Ballyquin Bay with Bridget Breeze and Tom Midgley within about a head of the lead though. And then hashtag Lord and uh, three-time champion jockey Brian Hughes in the pink and brown colors on the rail. That one's trapped there by a cheap thrill. It's just preceded there by Ingenio in the blue jacket, check cap. And Genio followed round on the outside by Edgar Allan Poe, Ross Chapman, and indeed his trainer Sue Smith looking for a... The money there around for about four was holding me up. Cheap thrill is on the inside for Sean Quinlan in the red and white stars. The other red jacket on the outter for three. Nice. And Jonathan Not England, a lot of movement, otherwise. Still looking at the rear. Danny McMenamin on Barranco having his first start. It's just not enough money actually coming in. Look at these bets too. Why he was a bit fresh early on. One, down then 20, the 10, 22, the and the quarter start on the no big money coming in at two. And moving nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh. Towards the back straight. One, four and one, not ten, fifteen. Quickly once they straighten up down the back. Bally Quinn still looking for his first race. win over hurdles. On the outside, Bridget Breeze. Tracked then by Hashtag Lord. He ran pretty well on his return. On the outside then, Edgar Allan Poe getting a little bit closer. Ingenio between them as they took the first down the back. Bel Naban patiently ridden by Emma smith Chaston, Followed through on the inner by a cheap thrill on the outside for three. What's that puppy doing? Ridden to yeah. by Jonathan England as they took Anything the else worth looking at at the moment? Was Baranko. That was the fifth flight. And now they've got quite a run before they get round to the last three hurdles. In the home straight, they're only about halfway down the back straight now here. So Ballyquin Bay, still the narrow leader, but uh, only just... Over. I'm out of here, man. Uh, just about a head down in second. Hashtag Lord has always been to the fore. And I feel like Just that. shading it for third at the moment with Ingenio right there as well. Now for three is on the move on the outside. You can see in the red jacket, a little bit making some good progress there on that bend. And then uh, behind them, still number from Bel Naban. Uh, oh the stable mate is on the inside, traveling reasonably well. I'm out of here, man. Go on the outside, a packing field. Only about four lengths would cover them. They're coming round to the entrance of the home straight, inside the final half mile here. Ballyquin Bay from Bridget Breeze. <laughs> <Brees, the laughs> <man. laughs> for a, 
a challenge for three in third place. A share of third with hashtag Lord Ball ba uh, The one being pulled up at the back is Barranco. This is three out now. Baliquin Bay over it just from for three on the near side. Under pressure, Bridget Breeze. Hashtag Lord is next. Ingenio now being released by the to challenge as they come down towards the second last. Ballyquin Bay clinging on to the advantage. Not that fluent. Look at Bel Naban picking up. The there you go. Ballyquin Bay taken on now by Ingenio and Bel Naban. And let's move on. Back in fourth place for... They've got just under a three quarters of a furlong left to go. Bel Naban and Emma Smith chat. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm just looking for uh, prices where I think they've come in too low. Uh, and then taking a big advantage uh, of that, getting like extreme value. Market suspended. Obviously, getting out because you never know anything can happen in horse racing, and always have a closing position. I say it time and time again. Always have a closing position because you could, um, even if it's a thousand to one. Trust me, when you've been doing this long enough, you'll realise that one day what will happen? There'll be a steward's inquiry. There is. Reverse the result. You think that you've closed off. If you haven't closed off your position, you think you've won. And actually, reserve. They can reverse the result, and it can cost you everything. So always get out. Always, always, always. Even if it's like going to cost you a penny, a thousand to one. Always close off your position when you're trading. Right. Let's move on anyway. In play. Okay, this is a bit of a weird one for looking at prices because uh, the second favourite got loose, was running all over the place, and has been withdrawn. So um, I've reached off basically. One thing you should do actually, if that ever happens, close the market down and then reload it because otherwise that gets rid of that horse. Otherwise, you'll have a dead. Dogly, dogly. Um, uh, a dead player, obviously, because. The software won't just delete that off the thing it will show you. You've still got the data, but for me, I always do that. Um, so, yeah, this is a bit of a weird one. Anyway, let's see what we can do. As they come up towards the parade ring, up towards the winning line on their first circuit in the closing race of the day. Rose Park. So, out in front then is. Fort Lauderdale. It's hard for me to tell where the money was matched. Though, see these gaps in the market. The outside now by Teddy right. Bank as they pass the judge. Illich racing in third place. Hell's getaway. It's and been then informed. Roebuck Bay on that one's outside. Frankie Lamb is next to the rail. What's that one? Roger Arity. Followed then by Getter Superstar. Charlie Hammond on board who's now the red hot favourite in the purple sleeves. Yellow cap on the outside. Racing alongside the well-bred Tease Comps Clive who's related to plenty of winners. As they move away from us, down the side of the course, they've got just can't under see much money changing hands on there to cover. Can't and uh, the it looks a reasonable one as well. Nothing too flashy, but no dawdle either. Fort Lauderdale leading. Track, tracked, in fact, by Hell's Getaway, stable companion in the red and blue colours there. But flanking on both sides then, Teddy Mack in the grey and red colours on the inside of the course is Illich who's over here from Stuart Crawford's base in Northern Ireland. Right behind these leaders then is Roebuck Bay and Sean Quinlan, black and yellow colours, with on the inside Frankie Lamb, owned and bred by Sally Hall, and then on the outside still is Get a Superstar, oh, in company it. with Tease Comps Clive. So they're turning down the back straight now, well that, like. on their way, approaching... The final nine furlongs of the contest, approaching the halfway point of the race. And uh, nothing much to choose between the two leaders now. In fact, Fort Lauderdale with on the outside Teddy Mack right behind them. And travelling strongly is Illich, saving ground all the way there for the champion jockey. Right uh, with them, though, in fourth, a share of fourth place, Hell's Getaway and Roebuck Bay wider out than to get a superstar. Up the inside goes Frankie Lamb. I'm out of here, man. On there to improve slightly, he does so. Closes up. Tease I'm just trying to do sort of a lay and low still strategy on this place, one, really. Still well in touch. Maybe four lengths would cover the whole field now. There's not much to choose between them, and they're all travelling quite well. Just a little bit old. I'm off looking, the looking at him Frankie there. Lamb, perhaps showing his inexperience as the runners race inside the final three quarters of a mile now. And. I can't see it winning, but... I'm out of here, man. Snuck up the inside there. 
and uh, is alongside Fort Lauderdale and Teddy Mack. Now look at uh, get a superstar. He's on the move wider, four deep on the track now. But a four the lead. All the way by Roebuck Bay and Hell's Getaway. T's Coach Clive is just now shaken up, and on the inside rail still Frankie Lamb, turning into the home straight. Enough match. Furlongs left to cover here. Get a superstar looking strong on the near side in the yellow cap. Up the inside, Illich. Brian Hughes would fancy his chances as well. And now they're beginning to pick up these two leaders. Hell's Getaway's trying to go with them. But as they move down inside the final quarter mile here, I wish, I wish close on the far side is in front. But Get a superstar is now being shaken up. It's got two legs to find them with a furlong and a bit left. To... Yeah, that was a shame. I just couldn't get enough matched on it. Um... Obviously, I had more money in that got picked up. I only got, I don't know, you can see that, a couple of 250 bets, 70 pence bet. Who the hell bets 70 pence? Oh, I suppose it could be a closing off position. Um, bear with me. Let's have a look at my match. Market suspended. Uh, where's match bets? Match bets. Match bets. Oh, I'll tell you what, they might be under there. Yeah. So yeah, so look, I only got, I literally only got some £5.70 matched, uh, and I, I can't remember what was unmatched, but there was quite a lot more than that in there. Shame, shame we didn't get sort of a tenner match, because uh, obviously it's been a bit more cash. But uh, yeah, that's what happens when you go low in the market. It did hit a little bit lower than that beforehand, but at that point I was being greedy and trying to get it at around fours, but yeah, shame. But if you look at where we went at sixes, it was just pennies, to be honest with you, that got matched beneath me, you know, that I didn't get. So that's kind of basically laying at, laying at the bottom of the actual market, which you can't get any better value than that. Chuck that back under there. I like it sometimes, but I don't want to be told all, all my match bets. Next race. Last race coming up next. Important. Gillen takes it about three or four from the back with uh, McTavish. We've got a nice long race so here. Up towards the we back, we have Oscar's bit. Man. And last of all is Be My C. Let's go. Amigo is over the second, as are the whole field. So in this long distance race, they'll pass us three times in all. This is the first of those occasions, and they're led by Let's Go Amigo in the blue with the white central stripe. Joe Cotton on the inside. Oggly, Oggly. Mattian in the red and white stripes, and Cara Corum in the blue with the white spots. Orange and white of Hattrick Seeking What You Wearing is just ahead of Grassy's Jet in the quartered colors of red and green. And Gillen, the market leader in the blue with the white chevron. And then towards the back, the other hat-trick seeking horse, McTavish, in the pink and black, Oscar's man in the royal blue sleeves. And last of all, as they turn away, be my C. So out in the lead, let's go, Amigo, from Joe Cotton, Samatian, as they turn into the back straight and towards the three flights of hurdles there for the first time. Let's go, Amigo. The axe, the hundred the advantage coming in that lead is just over a length from Joe Cotton and Samatian. Can't Samatian have missed that little opportunity to get a few ticks there. Likewise, what you wearing and carrying Just all that much money side, changing the hands. Those uh, grassy jet. As let's go, Amigo leads them over the first down the back. Gillen's on Grassy's jets outside with McTavish, Oscar's man. I'm trading. Call you back. And right at the back remains B my C. Top to bottom would be round about ten lengths. Let's go, Amigo is continuing to press on. Has the lead of nearly three lengths now over Samatian, who's half a length in advance of Joe Cotton. They are racing in second and third places. Fourth place, Cara Corum on the outside of What You Wearing. And behind these we have Grassy's Jet, who races on the inside of Gillen as they reach the middle flight down the back. Number four, they all take it well enough. Oscar's man remains towards the back. Don't like the fact that's seen. gone out because that price could have dropped hurdles back to in, take so. over on the far side. Lower. Let's go, Amigo, leading towards That's it. Cotton. Samatian in the red and white striped colours on the That's outside. That's what you're wearing, Devin. Rises in second. Price-wise. Over in third is Joe Cotton, ahead of Cara Corum on the outside of the orange and white of what you're wearing. Sixth place is shared between Gillen in the blue and white colours on the outside of Grassy's Jet. And then a little wide into the bend is Oscar's oh. Man racing on the outside of McTavish. And as they take the turn, the overall back marker remains at BMIC. So first circuit, once encouraged to the front, let's go Amigo has led them from that point and leads. 
not quite yet at halfway. Samatian in second place, Joe Cotton is third, and this trio now about four to five lengths clear of towards the inside what you wearing. Cara Corum and they're split by Glasses Jet. No move yet from the likes of Gillen or McTavish. BYC's just got a little bit closer as Let's Go Amigo pops over the next flight of hurdles, which is number six. And we're reaching the halfway stage of this Christmas meeting on the 30th of December handicap hurdle. Let's Go Amigo. Over in the lead, Samatian in second place. So the two Kim Bailey runners Thank continue you. to hold court. Joe Cotton in third place, ahead of the orange and white colours of what you're wearing. Then Grassy's Jet, Cara Corum oh, and Gillen. Going to get matched then, let's yeah. go, Amigo passes us. Oh, yeah, circuit no. to race. Oh, oh no. So let's go, Amigo. From Samatian and Joe Cotton. Inside, what you're wearing. Then Grassy's Jet, Cara Corum. Gillen still with two behind. how frustrating that is. see who's close enough the inside. But Tavish towards the back. And on the outside is Oscar's man. So into the spin the they head. Out in the lead, it is Let's Go Amigo by three lengths from Samatian and Joe Cotton. What you wearing on the inside of Grassy's Jet? Gillen just taking slightly closer order. Cara Corum's lost a place or two, just drifting back, still in touch, but was uh, disputing third early on. He's now back in about seventh place. Oscar's man took a, a wide course around that bend, and B My C has been relegated to last again. Let's go, Amigo. Over that. Still has the lead. I'm out of here, man. Let's go, Amigo, from Samatian in second More place. money on the lay side. If I lose a five, The inside is Joe Cotton. We'll Gillen see. is getting a little closer. Now has moved through to dispute fourth place with what you're wearing and grasses yet. Then Long way to go, him. don't forget. McTavish comes next as they make their way towards the next flight of hurdles in the back straight. Let's go, Amigo. Has the lead. Still a healthy one. Samatian and Joe Cotton. And then Gillen on the outside of Grassy's Jet as the leader just left a trailing leg there. Indeed, both the Bailey horses weren't great. Samatian just being pushed along and a reminder for the leader. And Let's Go Amigo is being closed on by the chasing pack. Come out of here, man. Samatian are what you're wearing. Gillen's out very wide on the course, but he's making ground, as is Grassy's Jet for Jack Quinlan. And it's Grassy's Jet who's moved through to press Let's Go Amigo with Gillen and also making ground from the back. The pink colours of the tabish on the outside of what you're wearing. Then Samatian, a gap to Caracol and Joe Cotton's uh, you can see <laughs> it's a long old race. And be my C. So I could so try and scout again, that a bit more, actually. Kieran Gethings has been hard at work for a while, but he's getting a response of sorts. Still leads. Gillen coming round there on the outside for Harry Cobden. Absolutely cruising at the moment. Then Grassy's Jet. Samatian, another one trying to rally. Then the orange colours of What You're Wearing and McTavish. But your eye is drawn to the right-hand side where Gillen has powered through to dispute the lead. But McTavish and What You're Wearing, the two hat-trick seekers, are coming with Gillen. So three last-time out winners heading down towards the last. Gillen on the right still appears to be holding sway. Then the orange and white colours of What You're Wearing. McTavish back in third. Gillen at the last. Still only a length clear from McTavish and What You're Wearing. But Gillen just doing enough at the moment. Not want to come down enough to me advantage. again, is it? Kept up to the work with half a furlong to go. But three progressive horses in this grade will fight out the finish. And and Gillen is too strong. And you can see on these weak markets, you can Market see how much that suspended. moved. How much that moved because I got out uh, being greedy as well at a high price. And it still came down afterwards, back down right the way down to fours. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, three to one, four point zero. Uh, and you see that there's 127 quid match there. And what are we getting? We got in at 6.2. And out at 13. So you can just show that how much these markets are moving around when they're uh, weaker. Almost made 10 quid a market today. There was the £5 one with the extra little bits on top. It's going to be, well, you might as well call it. Who's going to let me off? We'll call that one £10 a day. There you go, guys. That's the results for the day. Just backing up the videos that you've seen. Um, you might notice there's an extra race in there at Taunton 3.15. Um, I forgot to hit the record button. I spoke to it, gave me the commentary, just didn't record it. Never mind. So, yeah, £68.87, almost a tenner per race. That Newcastle race at 5.50, if I'd got more of my uh, stake match, that would have been over a tenner as well. But unfortunately, I was just bottom of the market yeah, and it didn't quite take enough. But, yeah, I hope that's helped you out. Um, any problems, questions, uh, don't forget, leave a comment, uh, drop me an email, don't forget to hit the like button, that helps me out loads, and if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe, 
if you uh, need a copy of the race timer, then all my, by all means, just drop me a email. Uh, other than that, best of luck in the markets and goodbye for now. Introducing Geek's Toy Trading Software, the fastest, most customizable, and most popular software for betting and trading on Betfair and BetDAC. Designed by professional traders for you. Key features include unlimited desktop settings and the ability to create custom profiles to suit every user's needs. Unbeatable speed, real-time prices and one-click betting. Unique management of multiple markets. You can bet or trade on multiple sporting events simultaneously. Support for eight languages. Context-driven help on every window. Dutching and bookmaking. Training mode. Advanced charting. Enhanced navigation. Support for Betfair coupons. Stop loss and more. Geek's Toy. Possibly the best Betfair and BetDAC trading software in the world.